Let me tell you a little story about how it is to live in the little country of Luxembourg. If, by some grace of God, you are able to knife battle your way into owning an apartment or you just suffocate your grandma in her sleep to, you know, heritage and stuff, if you somehow manage to pull that off, you will be left with around five options of how you want to get internet into your apartment or your house. Which, once you realize that all the landlines are owned by the same company, you there is like, like one king. It's, it's one reigns above all of them. It's, it's not even funny, but yeah, you have basically five options. The only outliner would be Eltrona, who is pushing their internet like through the old terrestrial uh, like TV lines, which are not used anymore. Uh, which sounds rather stupid, but if you have like a, a farming house somewhere in, in the deep of nothing, uh, you will be very glad that they are there. Like, I know about cases where old TV lines are a lot quicker than whatever type of copper lies in, in the ground. It's really impressive. But no matter what regular internet career you are going for, what you will get is this piece of crap. This is a Fritzbox and oh, for the love of God, I hate, I hate Fritzbox. It, nothing about this is good. It's really astonishing to me that a single company dominates a whole freaking country. Like no matter to which carrier, to which provider you go, everybody will give you one of those. And they are incredibly bad. Like, I swear to God, a sheet of paper, they, the Wi-Fi will go through, but if you have that juicy paper, that, that 90G paper, well then, mm, add a wall to that and, and you are done. It's that much unfunny that if you try to connect a new apartment, they will by default add two Wi-Fi extenders, no matter where you live, just because they already know that this is garbage. The only, and I mean the only positive thing about the Fritzbox is the fact that it takes the login data that you need to, to connect to the provider, all of that, that weirdest logging data, they will get them automatically. Like you connect them, if you got a new one, you connect it, you wait a minute and then boom, internet is there. If you have whatever other router, no way, you need to configure it yourself. So that's one positive aspect. However, to cut it short, I hate Fritz boxes. And to give you the best example possible, here in the office, although I just have 100 megs down and uh, 20 megs up, which is okay, I will get fiber in a week or two, so I will be even better then. But if I, for example, upload videos to YouTube or especially Amazon, because yes, we are uploading videos to Amazon, but if I do that, I completely cripple my whole network. Nothing is working anymore. I don't know what this thing does, but uh, as soon as, as I just upload a video, anybody in the office, my, even my own PC, the other PCs which are connected over LAN, um, no matter what phone, nothing has a connection anymore. Everything breaks down except for that one upload that I'm doing at that time, which is ridiculous. I have 20 megs up. And if I want to connect to my local server, there is no reason why the whole network should be eaten by my one upload. It's, it's ridiculous. So I hate this. And I thought, as we are in the process of renovating the whole studio, well then, I could also just put cut eight cables uh, all around the walls and distribute them across the whole studio, which I did. And therefore, we also need a router upgrade. And because we are putting a 10 gig card into my PC and we have a 10 gig card in the server, yeah, we need a pretty hefty upgrade. So for this whole 10 gig network upgrade that we are about to do here in the office, I decided to get ourselves a new router. And it's going to be this Synology RT6600AX. Now there are many reasons why I went uh, exactly for this router. Initially, I wanted to go with that whole D-Link Orbit Pro thing and then get like the router and maybe two satellites and distribute them Ooh, this is one beautiful boy. Uh, I wanted to distribute them across the whole studio. However, the main problem with it was when I discovered that in order to be able to VPN into the network, which we do quite often here, I would need to get a subscription service. And I'm not prepared to pay a subscription service just to VPN into my office. Now I could set up like a VPN server and, and, and everything I need for that and then do it manually. I could do that because I have a static IP, but uh, it's just too much of a hassle. And I googled all across the world and apparently this Synology router is 
exceptionally good for the price. And it, it has a free VPN function, so uh, I can just VPN into it and then I'm fine. And it has, <laughs> it has a ridiculous amount of antennas. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what is this? So I just hope that this will be much, much stronger than the crappy box that I had here, like even size-wise, this, this is a ridiculous difference. But also like if you, if you just, this is like half empty and this is like one solid, solid block. I, I really like this. Another quite positive aspect about this router is the fact that one of the ports is a two and a half gig port. For the majority of people out there, uh, you will either have an old one gig port in the back of your PC or a two and a half gig port. So that's somewhat interesting. If you have some like multiple little NASs connected to your router, you can play with that. Sure, fine, but I need 10 gig power. And in order to have 10 gig power, what I also got is a Netgear business switch because, yes, oh yeah, this looks very much business. With one, two, three, four 10 gig lines. I have four 10 gig lines. Ha <laughs> ha! Amazing. So the idea here is to just rip this one out the wall because I just don't want it anymore. I don't want to use it. The Wi-Fi is crap. The internal connection is crap. The only good thing is VPN. Replace that sucker with our new Synology one, which now where we will get fiber in a week or two, we'll leverage that power somehow. Like just imagine I have one gig down and I'm downloading at one gig down. Uh, the port is filled. So nobody else in the network will be able to do anything because I can guarantee you this thing does not even survive one gig in, in any direction. Now the idea here was to rip this one out, get the Synology connected, somehow connected to, to whatever Luxembourg does. Uh, I will need to figure that one out. And from there have my PC, the other PC, the server and then one free port just left there. Oh yeah, I also have optical. So for the switch, we have the router to give everybody access, of course. We have the server, we have my PC, and we have the secondary PC. And from there, over Wi-Fi, everybody can still connect. We have the two and a half gig line coming down here in case I want a VPN into, let's say, the server. Unfortunately, I cannot walk us like live through the installation process because all of the lines are coming out in the other room where also my PC is. So I will move all of that to my PC and we will have a retrospective look at how all of this went. The installation procedure should have been somewhat easy and the emphasis here lies on should have. After a dozen of deconnects and the Synology router just not wanting to connect to my line, I was forced to do an update in hopes that maybe a software firmware update would change anything, but uh, apparently it didn't. It just gave me a uh, nicer looking logging screen. This went on for, let's say, the better part of eight hours. At that point I realized that this may have been my own fault. Originally, when I bought all of this stuff, I didn't buy a router with a modem included because, frankly, I didn't think I need one. Why? Because when you get the, the fiber connection from a provider, they will give you some sort of box, translation box, installed in the basement, which does take the fiber line and then does the modem stuff, and then from there on you have a normal connection. And because originally this was already supposed to happen mid-January, and we are in February, uh, yeah, it didn't happen. And yeah, I kind of forgot that my provider is as reliable as gaming on a laptop. Uh, long story short, I didn't care about it, even though I knew that this is a possibility, because I thought the connection at my office was the same as I have at home. And what I have at home essentially is called bonding, where they take two lines, they go into... Yeah, this is like a splitter that takes away the, the old telephone line. I, I, I'm really unsure, don't call me on that, but... We have two of those splitters and whatever comes out goes into a Segacom box and out of that Segacom box comes already a normal line, meaning that the Segacom box is essentially a modem and you connect it to the LAN one port of your router. And because I had my topology from home in mind, I thought no matter what happens, it will work. But I don't have a bonding line in the office. I have a regular line in the office. Well, which means that the modem inside my Fritz box actually needs to do something. And that was my issue. However, give it a day and I had a good shower thought and I was able to do something like a PPPoE pass-through. Like I, I was able to allow multiple connections and then pass through 
through my Fritz box, disable all, all of the routing functions, and then go into the Synology router, and then there repeat all of the configurations, and then it took it. My Synology router was able to build up a connection, essentially using the Fritz box as a modem. And for now, this is where I need to stay until I have my fiber upgrade. The moment I get the fiber upgrade, they will give me whatever black box will do the modem stuff in the basement, and then I can take the line that is going into the Fritz box, move it over to the Synology router, and yada yada yada, I have my single router system in my office. <sighs> it took close to 24 hours to set everything up. It was a mess. It was a real freaking mess. But I did some calculations, and overall, the 10 gig upgrade inside the office wasn't as expensive as I uh, initially believed. The router set me back about 330, which is a lot, frankly, and the switch was 290. Add that a network card of 130 euros each, and we have a total of 750 euros to have 10 gig in my office. Which, yeah, that's quite a lot, but now I'm able to do this, and this is definitely worth it. Uh, to be honest, if I wouldn't have a Fritz box, or if I wouldn't be so pissed about it not performing as I expected to, I could have also just not get the router and just stay with the switch and a network card, which would be like 420, and then plus 130 for each PC that needs a 10 gig card, so that's already a lot cheaper, and then you still have 10 gig in the office. However, this is an office environment. Uh, I would never spend that amount of money for my home setup. Uh, of course, nowadays, if you have Intel 12th generator, or Ryzen 7000 or later, you will have a 2.5 gig network card in there, uh, which is very nice, don't get me wrong, but uh, who has a 2.5 gig connection at home? So uh, you could argue about latency, but other than that, nobody needs this in a personal home. And I don't either, so I will never do that at home. It will be standard in like 10 years maybe, but uh, for now, no. And this is office, and the only reason I'm doing this is to do this. So yeah, this was kind of a weird video, I know that, but uh, maybe somebody is looking forward to do a 10 gig upgrade on his own, so uh, here are my experiences, it was a mess. Basically zero support from anybody, like Synology won't help you, how could they? They don't know your provider, there is no connection there. And when I called my ISP to any sort of help, the moment I just mentioned that I'm taking out the Fritz box, it was, yeah, thank you, bye. Uh, so they weren't the biggest help either. So you need to kind of DIY everything on your own, which uh, isn't really easy, but it's manageable. It's really manageable, a bit of Googling, a bit of Reddit, and uh, then you will figure it out. So at this point, I'm just happy that copying up and down my projects won't take an hour anymore, but like five minutes, which is great, which is really amazing. So yeah, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.